Wow! What do we have here? A 2022 Hyundai Elantra. There's some great things, some winning things, and does this car in fact light on fire? Today we're going to do a review, walk around, talk around, look at the quality experience, check at the way this car is put together, and go for a short ride. And we'll talk about everything good, bad, and ugly about this 2022 Hyundai Elantra. Let's get right to the chase. So first, talk about some of the exterior styling, which made this car a breakthrough when it came out and was first released. This beautiful little Hyundai here obviously has a new revised grille. As you can see, you've got lots of plastic components, but a new style grille that does make it look flashy. You have a great set of headlights with a wonderful set of blinkers right there. Just when you thought the blinkers were gonna be in the headlight assembly, up with just above that eyeball, in fact, they're actually tucked away down in there. You can see the signal light flashing down there. Total stealth mode. Let's take a look here. And as we move up here, I love these new style headlights. Definitely very contemporary. Great styling LEDs. Can't go wrong there. Here you have a little marker light. I actually thought that was a signal light, but there you go. We all learned something. How about this little grill here? We have this beautiful little vent. And if you look down here, they have this beautiful crease design right here, this wide, birth of a basically of a front spoiler and if you look down here you'll actually see you can see daylight through there so this is a very very unique looking design touch and i love how it flows through there and provides extra air to the front brakes now we circle back here and we get a better perspective of this car from the front and as you can see it actually has a very aggressive look to it for such a small entry-level sedan, what you're finding is a car that actually has a pretty significant stage presence. If you look at the front, how it broadens out at the bottom corners, it has a great design there. Circle up here, love these design themes up here as you the crease runs up and it does it on both sides over there as well. Now, unfortunately, this car has no sunroof, but that's okay. It is an entry-level car competing with the likes of the Toyota Corolla as well as the Honda Civics. Now, if there's one thing that Hyundai did was they literally wanted to emphasize style, detail, hard angles. And you'll see that in a lot of the family of the Hyundai products here in the most recent years. And this one's no different. Let's take this actually from the front. Firstly, we have a set of 205 16 inch wheels and clearly that makes it a very affordable skin to actually change when it's time to put new rubber on there. They do have these beautiful black rims that are polished, look sharp. Now, if you look here, I love how these creases, you'll notice what Hyundai is doing with this crease here. And then they create this crease around the wheel well. Then they build on this crease that runs down the length of the door panel and then it tightens up as you get to the back again. Then even the door handles, you have this significant crease that flips over the top. It's not just horizontal, it actually comes up, it's great. And then this beautiful crease comes back here and then it starts up again as you circle back and you'll notice it extends out to the rear tail light assembly which now has a beautifully designed, probably CAD designed tail light assembly leading to an LED finishing right there. Now as we look down here, what we can say is we do see more of this beautiful accent there and we have more of those sharp angles along the bottom which clearly is an indication as to the design theme. There's a little, another little crease that runs down in here in case you missed that. So just take a good look back here and you'll notice these cars actually are full of crease lines, accents, angles, and it just brings a lot of attention for the eyes. It's a very, very cool design theme what they've done here because when these drive down the road, when I first saw one of these, it really just caught my eyes. But then as we look back here, we have more design themes here, more sharp angles that run down here and a little jut out. And as well, more sharp angles that come down to here. And we even have some of the sharp edges on the light bar down here. There's lots of angles and design on this gorgeous new Elantra. Now, what we do have here is a set of exhaust tips that aren't exhaust tips, when in fact they're actually underneath instead. I mean, many manufacturers are going with these fake knockouts that look like exhaust tips from a distance, but there's no exhaust tips here. A lot of that's cost cutting, a lot of it is style. It allows them to give them more capability to create that design theme at the back instead of having an exhaust tip that pops out. I personally love a solid exhaust tip, but this is going on everywhere. Try Mercedes, try Audi, they're all the same. Now, I am personally a big fan of when manufacturers go outside the bubble and they start thinking about unique design accentuations, a lot of manufacturers play it safe. And quite frankly, I like when they step outside their comfort zone. I mean, look at here, they're even trying something different right here where it has a little bit of a clamshell look. It's not a clamshell hood, but it certainly has that look because this doesn't even 
tie in nicely. This almost looks like it overhangs from the front fender. It's definitely a little bit of a more unique design theme right here that they've done there. It almost looks slightly unfinished, but there you go. Now, what sort of drivetrain do you think you have in these? Well, let's go inside and take a quicker look and I'll share some of the details. First, pop this hood. Well, there's a few different engine choices. You can get a hybrid version as well, made it up to an automatic transmission, and you can get an N version. That's right, N, like Zorro, actually does give you a lot more performance, double clutch, better performance with the Turbo 1.6. This one here, we're talking about a naturally aspirated. That's right, no turbos in this vehicle. Four-cylinder engine that pumps out a whopping 147 ho 143 horsepower, I don't know. At this point, it doesn't really matter. 140 horsepower and thereabouts is what makes this car move down the road. The worst part is it isn't just the performance of the engine, which is soft, meager, frugal, and relaxed. It's actually what it's made it up to for transmission, and that's equally where some of the problems are. Tucked in behind there, because what we're dealing with is a transversely mounted engine. That means it goes side to side. It's coupled up, in fact, to a CVT, the continuously variable transmission. Which is what I like to refer to as elastic band of transmission, because it's essentially a series of steel belts and pulleys, and they change their diameter, and that's how you get the different RPMs and speeds out of it. But they're not necessarily the most reliable, and they definitely have their maintenance concerns. One thing I'll comment on the accessibility for a lot of components within this hood space is it means it looks like it's relatively easy to maintain and fairly durable. We have a battery that's easy to access, easy to put a tender on. We have lots of plastic like everybody, but not like BMW world where they actually use those plastic fittings. Here they're using a good old fashioned spring tension clamp applied to a standard type hose, meaning it's going to be simple, cost effective, and less likely to spring a leak. You see more of that theme going on over here with this little hose. And as you look around, a lot of the coolant hoses have that nice all tension spring clamp which makes it very reliable easy access for your oil checks as you can see this one's constantly adding oil probably leaking like a sieve or burning some oil but maintenance does appear to be quite simple on this vehicle all right let's go see what the inside's all about well the interior feels a little spartan but there's like a lot of great touches in here um, there's a lot of plastic so if you're not a fan of plastic well this might not be the car for you but plastic does have its benefits it's light it's compact, it's easy to replace. As well, it wears very well. You don't have those wear points. Plastic just wears well. You can wash it, clean it. It's easy to maintain. So it's good for a growing family or people that are a little sloppy or maybe eating McDonald's or eating your ice cream and ice cream hits those side, you can wipe that off. Super easy, clean car to maintain. But anyway, as I go around, let's take a look. Over here, I like some of these touches. They have these great little details. Here's some fake stitching on the side panel. Over here, they have this cute speaker dressed in a beautiful brushed chrome aluminum. Looks great as does the handle. Operates very, very nice with that brushed look. Simple handle controls over here where your ergonomics should be. Basically, your door switches, your window switches, your mirrors, everything's over here as it should be. Now, as I cycle over on the left-hand side, you'll see you got your lighting, basically interior lighting. You've got your lane assist and you've got some traction control. And I mentioned that previous on a Kia Seltos, but clearly that's a great spot for, because those are controls that you don't always need at, at hand. And you definitely don't want your passenger disabling traction control. So that's a great spot. Now over here, as we, you know, as we go a little higher, there's a great vent here with some nice smooth, you know, they feel like the controls are very smooth. They feel nice. They feel nice engaging. They're very, very solid feeling. As we go up a little higher, there's this dummy panel here. It looks like it needs some switches or some vents, um, but that's just what it is. And then basically go over here and we see we have tilt and we have telescopic and it's a great detail here. Easy to operate, get it right where you need it. And then of course, I love these little handles, the switches, so the stocks, you get this beautiful high gloss slapped on top of this dark matte matte plastic and of course you have this little knurled like glossy more in the theme of the rest of the car which is hard edges so it looks great and then over here same storyline on the other stock we have more of those knurled finishes over here it looks great and that's basically for your wipers the other side for your signals and lights this steering wheel nice it's got a you know rubbery leathery touch to it but it's great the controls here on the side of the steering wheel are great they have this beautiful high gloss black piano finishing on it love that 
Of course, you have your speaker and your, your hands free and all that for your phones on the one side. On the other side, you have all your you know cruise control and some of your other elements like some of the uh, safety nannies are tucked over on the right hand side. Up here, you can see more of those great vents with controls that are just really, really nice to use. They're great. And on top of that, we have this infotainment system here. The screen is eight inches in diameter. It's a great touch. Looks a little bit aftermarket, looks a little dressed down if we're being honest, but the controls are simple. The knobs are where you need them. The writing is legible. It's simple. And sometimes I've heard people complain, especially older folks, maybe their eyes start going like my eyes aren't what they used to be. And sometimes small lettering you can't read on certain packages are difficult, but this is great. The lettering's big, bold on a dark contrasted background. Of course, we have that nice screen. Controls are easy to use, simple. Down here in the middle, we have a push button start and we also have the three HVAC controls, simple. It's not dual, but it is simple, hot, cold, AC and the like in your different scenarios. You have a series of buttons here in the middle and down here, most importantly, of course, most people like these nowadays, we have a 12 volt charging port, good for about 180 watts. We have a USB plug-in as well for auxiliaries and a charge port there to boot. Here is the control for your automatic transmission or should I say CVT? Because CVT, continuously variable transmission, we already mentioned, it's very sporty, it's very engaging. What you can do is as you're driving, you can go reverse, neutral, drive. Once you're in drive, you can switch it over to sport mode and you can plus minus that and actually kind of do a manual shift on it. It's actually quite interesting, quite, quite cool. And of course, you have different drive modes down in the center and of course, parking cameras. You can disable, enable. Down here in the middle, we have a couple of cup holders, very simple for those. Always got to have your Slurpee here ready for that. And this panel basically separates the driver from the passenger, which some people don't like that. Some people like it. You know, some people like to have their, you know, their best other, you know, just have their arm around them and have them close. This isn't going to happen here. This keeps a bit of a divider here. You've got the holy crap handle here, but it does give that driver focus space it does feel make you feel like you're in a bit of a spaceship or a cocoon it's a nice detail here then of course on the back seat here i love that there's some nice stitching down the center of the seat it's not even really a stitching it's more of an embossed rubberized texture but it does bring a little bit of flair to this the seating capacity because otherwise the seats are very simple they're essentially cloth mildly bolstered not too much going on there, but they put a little flavor down the middle. So the center looks, as you can see, not overly elaborate. There's lots of hard plastics. So it doesn't have the essence of high quality per se, but it is designed to wear well and last a lot of miles because it's very simple. Of course, the materials in general are quite simple all the way around. Now you do have this great vent and that, that look is actually quite stylish. More slightly softer plastics and rubbers up here, but still lots of lots of expansive rubber and plastic so definitely no shortage of looking cheap but again it wears well here glove box simple very easy to use and everything up here is just at a line sight you have a great visibility out the window and everything is within a reach of the driver seating space is very spartan if you thought the front was simple try the back here take a look of course down here we have oh this is a used car look there's some kind of stain not sure what's going on there but you know the thing is there's not even a vent down here so you don't have a means to heat or cool the feet of the tootsies of the little family members that sit in the back seat everything is quite simple and effective but not much going on there but the rent the other thing is there's no split seating back here there's no center drop down here for your cup holders there's not even a way to split that up it's basically one large seat altogether. and to get at that you have to get to the front get that trunk open you can do a couple of ways number one is with the pull lever and number two you can hit that little button and it drops it lifts it for right there of course you do have your little backup camera voila and there you go a very simple setup and of course as you can see it's just one long seat there and you have to use this and this you have to pull them both to push that down just like that then it's simple the other thing is you can fit many many golf clubs many many bags of groceries if you can afford them these days and then of course you happen to have as well a spare wheel down here which is kind of a rare rarity these days also comes with your jack and Closes that up nice and simple and effective.
All right, that was the out and the in, and now let's do the quality experience. Take a look. What I have noticed, firstly, are these panels don't really line up all that well. All right, let's take this rig for a ride now. Let's go. All right, buckled in, let's go for a ride. So I'm gonna chuck it down into drive for now as we set off with 145 horsepower. Let's give it a little gusto. Oh, as you can tell, that slingshot effect. So as the engine revs up, the CVT lazily follows suit and just sort of eventually slings you forward. And that's just a pretty characteristic of most cars with CVTs and Hyundai's, Kia's, Toyota's, Honda's, they all roll with them these days, uh, particularly in their lower entry level cars. But I will say, aside from that, so the acceleration is not overly breathtaking, but it's brisk enough. It's good, you know, it, it, it does a great job of getting you up to speed. I will say, first off, driving down the road here, uh, the handling, the switchback handling does a great job as well of just sort of uh, toggling you lightly back and forth. It's it, it's not super responsive, but it's kind of on par with what you would anticipate for a car of this caliber. I will say the ride is very muted. If there's one thing I can note is it's actually very quiet in here. It's even quieter than I experienced in that Kia there a couple weeks back in the Kia Seltos. This Hyundai Elantra is actually very quiet. It purrs along. It doesn't make a lot of noise. The engine's quiet until you're revving it, of course, but if you're leisurely coasting down the road, it's pretty casual. And so here we set off again. The car does, if you're not going hard, I will say it does a good job of just keeping the revs down and doesn't get you too excited. Uh, for the experience because there's nothing really to get excited about the experience now what I will do is there's a drive mode down here drive select I can activate that I can put it in sport mode smart mode normal which I had it on already but let's go back to sport mode and see what it does for us um, and I'm gonna toggle over the control so I get the shifting myself okay so let's go shift up that's not bad, I, if we're being honest, shift down. It actually feels like it's a proper shifting transmission. Sport mode actually does a great job of electrifying what is otherwise a really boring, ho-hum driving experience. And this does a great job of just sort of livening it up a little bit. So let's try that again. Down. Yeah. Downshift. Wow, not bad actually, if we're being honest. It actually makes it somewhat fun to drive, somewhat. Now, we can go back to normal mode. And smart mode would basically, all that gives you is, it just settles everything down even further. So when you put in smart mode, it sort of adapts to what you're trying to do. But for the most part, the idea is economy. So it's trying to keep everything relaxed and calm, so you're not using much fuel, the car's not getting too rammy. It's basically just a quite a simple driving experience. So we're just back in D, sitting in traffic, and I will say, turn up the air conditioning. I will say the fan is a little loud, as you can hear. I gotta step up my voice to get that out, but it actually has a, it belts out the air conditioning pretty strongly. Oh, we have somebody there, I think they're looking for gold. See how it drives in non sport. It shifts well, actually. Even in normal mode, the man. 
manual shift with the plus minus, it actually feels pretty sprightly. It feels it feels like if you want to just kind of make an otherwise average vehicle seem a little bit fun to drive. So, but there's still no deceiving you from the fact that the matter is you have 140 and change horsepower. You still can't fool that part of it, but it does make it somewhat a little bit more engaging when you operate the sport shifting and basically shift back to drive. Now, as I say, it, I've noticed I hit some rough bumps there. This is Edmonton, Alberta. The bumps are pretty prevalent and it's eating up bumps. My pickup truck gets hammered on some of these bumps. This car just eats them up. You don't even know they're there. It's so, the car is very isolated. It's a nice car to drive. It's unoffensive. And now with this newer string of engines that Hyundai and Kia have, the, the actual reliability and durability of some of these newer type drivetrains are much better than they've been in the past. Now there's been lots of NHTSA reports on some of the outgoing engines, but these new series of engines seem to be a lot more robust and there seem to be a lot fewer problems in this last three or four years of production within this brand. All in all, other than that slingshot effect you get from the CVT and the engine howling a little bit more when you really get on it, the car is very quiet, peaceful, serene, and for the price tag, just over a $20,000, you can get yourself a brand new car that gets you around A to B, conventionally, relatively reliably, and it gets phenomenal fuel mileage too. You can get up in the high 30s mile per gallon, and if you want to step this game up, if you like the style of the looks, what I showed you, and you're impressed with the rest of the car, remember these are the N versions, which do bring a lot more performance to the game and the equation for not a ton more money. So it's a fun car, easy to live with, and if we're being honest, the Hyundai Elantra is just a simple car with simple needs that gives you all the base necessities and not a whole lot more. And with all of that said, check that out. If you enjoyed this car, you're probably gonna really like the Kia Seltos. Definitely worth giving it a look. And with that said, it has some great colors, themes, technology that's better than many other vehicles in its class. If you like that, I'd love to see you back on Six Speed Reviews. Click the subscribe button down there and join the crew. Hope to see each and every one in the next one. See you then, bye-bye.